All right, cruising along here, we are going to look at something that's a little bit more complicated, but really interesting because we're going to start looking at finding volumes. Okay, so integrating a curve can give you an area, right? So hopefully it should make sense that extending that out, if I have an area formula and I take an integral of it, then I wind up with a volume. All right, so we're going to use this fact. We're going to use this fact to get some areas of some really cool shapes here. All right, and the basic idea is that we're going to take what's called, this is going to be cross sections. So what we're doing is we are taking whatever graph we're looking at and we're slicing it up. We're kind of slicing it up into little pieces, really tiny sections. And then we're going to accumulate out those pieces together. All right. And that's where the integral comes in because we're going to have all these tiny little pieces that are going to make up our integral and the function of whatever of the area of whatever those slices, those little slices are made of is going to give us our function to take the integral off. Okay. So let's take a look and we're going to use, uh, we're going to use basically a unit circle as our example. Okay. It goes from negative one to one and here's what the graph looks like negative square root of one minus X squared to the square root of one minus X squared. It makes this circle. Okay. And so part a, the cross sections are circular discs with diameters in the X, Y plane. Okay. So what this means is that we have these little cross sections. Okay. And we're using it to build whatever shape we're looking at. Okay. So what we're doing is we are slicing up little circles like this. Here's a circle. And then here's a circle. And I'm drawing a few of these, but the idea that I'm getting across is that these should be infinitely tiny little slices of circle. All right. And hopefully you're able to visualize that this is just going to wind up being a sphere. Okay. So some of you who remember your geometry and volume formulas might know what this answer should turn out to be. Okay. But it's all these little slices of circles and we're going to use those slices to get our area. Okay. Area. Our area formula of a circle is just pi r squared. Okay. And so our key to knowing what this integral is going to be is knowing what our radius is. Okay. And our goal is to put this radius as a function in terms of X. All right. So pi times R squared. Well, the radius of all these circles. Okay. Is this distance here. So how can we write that distance in terms of X? Well, it would just be wherever this point is, it's going from here to zero. Okay. From wherever this point is on the circle to zero. And so where is that? Well, that's the positive equation up here. Okay. Positive equation. So it's the positive square root of one minus X squared. And it's not using the bottom half because that wouldn't be the whole diameter. That's why it's a diameters were in the X, Y plane. 
Okay, so the radius equals square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. So integral, well, we're going from, we're slicing these circles from where to where. We're slicing them from starting at negative one and then we're going out to positive one. So from negative one to one of pi r squared. So we're putting that r in terms of x. Uh, pi can come out in front because it's just a constant. Okay, most of the time in these formulas, if there's a constant, we're just gonna bring it out in front. Okay times our radius, which is that square root of one minus X squared. Okay. And that all is going to get squared because it's pi R squared DX. Oh, well that's just pi times the integral. If I take a square root and square it, then I'm just going to wind up back where I started. Okay, so that simple that helps simplify it nicely. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the integral now. I'll do that over here. Oh, hey, it's four pi over three. And hopefully that shouldn't come as a big surprise to anybody because if you know uh, your formula for volume of a sphere, volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And this is just a sphere with a radius of one. So if the radius is one, then it should be four thirds pi or four pi over three. Okay, so not much remarkable, but this gives the basic rundown and idea. Okay, you're going to have this shape that you're using to slice the graph that you're looking at, and you need to figure out how the how you can write the area formula in terms of x. That's going to be our goal. All right, and for now, we're going to use the same shape, and we're going to do different things to it. So let's look at the next one. Next, we have squares with bases in the xy plane. So before I draw it, I would encourage you to try and draw what this is going to look like. Give me a slice or two of this. Remember, base in the xy plane means, okay, the base of the square is in the xy plane. That means one of the sides is in the xy plane, and the rest of the square should not be. Rest of the square should come off the graph. Okay, here it is. Here it comes. Again, I'll draw a couple slices so that you can get a visual. There's my base in the XY plane. And then the whole rest of the square is coming off the paper. So it's coming out towards you. Okay, here's another slice. Okay, and I'll show you what this looks like, what this actually looks like in just a second. So the idea here is that we wanna know how to find the area. Well, area of a square, area of a square is just whatever our side length is squared. Length times width and length and width are the same. Okay. Area of a square is just whatever its side length is squared. So I need to know what this side length is. The side length this time, last time I just wanted my radius, which just went from there to zero. Okay. But this time, I actually want to go 
my distance from the top curve to the bottom curve. From the top part of the circle to the bottom half of the circle. All right? No matter which point. From the top part of the circle to the bottom part of the circle. So that means I need top curve minus bottom curve. Top curve minus bottom curve. So I'm going to do that. Top curve is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Minus your bottom curve is the negative square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. Oh, that equals two times square root of one minus x squared. I just have two of them. Okay, so when I do my area, it's going to be our side squared. So two square root of one minus x squared squared which equals four times one minus x squared. Two squared is four, square root of x, one minus x squared squared is just one minus x squared. Okay, so volume is going to be, four can come out in front times the integral from negative one to one Okay, because remember these slices are going from negative one to one. That's how my slices are accumulating up between of one minus x squared dx. Well, I'm not going to show this out again because we already did it. I already showed it out earlier. Uh, it was four thirds. So this is four times four thirds. Again, you can do out the antiderivative again if you want, but it's the exact same function. So you should get 16 over 3. Okay, so make sure you get that written down. And then I'll come back and show you what this looks like. Oh, this is the exciting part. So I have this being, we have squares, and we're going from negative 1 to positive 1. All right, check this out. Bam, there it is. Okay, so here's, if I go down here, here is the base solid. This is the circle that we're basing everything around. Okay, and you can see here are each of my square slices. So if I go this way, starting at negative one, then here are each of my square slices with the base being in my xy plane. Okay? So what we just discovered is that this shape built out of this circle as my base and these little tiny squares that I use to slice, that that volume is exactly 16 over 3. Next, the cross sections are squares with diagonals in the xy plane. Oh, so this one's different. This one's different. Instead of being our bases in the xy plane, instead of being the bases, now the diagonals are in the xy plane. So before I go on, see if you can draw a picture of what that looks like. I'm making it dotted because none of this square is actually in, is actually on the paper, right? None of the sides of the square are actually on the paper. The only thing that's actually on the paper is the diagonal that would cut through the square. Okay, so to give you a, a if I were to, if I were to flip this and turn this so that you could see the squares, then here's what I'd be looking at. Okay, there's my square. Fantastic square, okay? And what we have is the only thing that's in the xy plane, 
only thing that's actually on the graph is this diagonal right here. Okay. So if the side lengths are S, all right, this is the hint that it gives. If the side lengths are S, well, because these two are equal, these two sides have to be equal because it's a square, then what we have is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So hopefully you know that this would be whatever side length we have times the square root of two. So we still have our area formula being S squared. All right. But this time we don't have S. We have the diagonal, which is S times the square root of two. So S times the square root of two is, well, again, it's going to be top curve minus bottom curve. So that is two square root of one minus X squared. Right, because we had the positive one minus x squared minus the negative one minus x squared. So that means our side length, if we divide, however you want to simplify this, this is two divided by the square root of two. You can multiply by square root of two on top of bottom to simplify it. Uh, you can know what two divided by square root of two is going to be. Uh, what you're going to wind up with is a square root of two on top square root of two times the square root of one minus x squared, which is the same as one minus x squared. I can just bring the two inside the square root since I'm multiplying. Okay, so my area formula equals well, it's going to be this side length squared, which the square root and the square are going to cancel nicely, 2 times 1 minus x squared. All right. So when we do the volume, again, we're accumulating we're accumulating all these little squares, these little sections from negative one to positive one. Okay. That's why there are bounds are negative one to positive one. Cause all these slices would go from negative one to one of, well, two can come out in front and then we have one minus X squared. dx. So again, we know what that is. We already found this integral. It was four thirds. You know, I could come up with different functions every time, but I trust you to be able to take an antiderivative, plug in the numbers at this point. So I'm focusing on the idea of drawing your pictures, getting your setup, writing your integral, because that's the tricky part of all this. One more. So cross sections with equilateral triangles with the base in the XY plane. What's happening again is here's my base. Okay. This is the base of the equilateral triangle. This is the bottom of the triangle. The rest of the triangle is going to come off the page. So I'll give you a moment, moment before I go on to draw. Okay, and hopefully you have something that looks like this. And again, I'll draw one more slice. Again, the idea is that there are an infinite number of these little slices. This is just the way that we can slice this three dimensional shape that we're actually looking at. Okay. Imagine an infinite number of these triangles coming along the shape. 
Okay, it's jumping out of the out of the screen or out of your paper and creating these little slices of triangles. Okay, now this area formula is going to be a little bit trickier. Well, area of a triangle is one half base times height. One half base times height. Okay, let's actually draw an equilateral triangle here. All right, now my base, my base is, oh, well, it's top curve minus bottom curve. That's in the XY plane, so it's nice and easy. It's two times the square root of one minus X squared. Okay, my height is a little bit trickier. So the height The height you need to remember your triangles. This is actually how I showed a 30, 60, 90 triangle in geometry. So these are all 60 degrees. And then this one gets split in half from 60 to be 30. So how does that help us? Well, this base is split in half. Square root of 1 minus x squared. This is 2 square root of 1 minus x squared, because it's a side. And if you remember your pattern, okay, if you remember your pattern, then this is my base. I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this thing s our pattern for 30 60 90 triangles was s this hypotenuse was 2s and this part was s times the square root of 3 okay so what that means is that our height is this guy times root 3 because of our 30 60 90 patterns so the height is this guy times root three. So that gives me my area equals one half my base, which is this. times my height. Well, my height is, again, this guy times square root of 3. Okay. Cancel. And so it just equals root 3 times, well, these two multiplied together is going to make 1 minus x squared. So again, when we write our integral for the volume, root 3 is going to come out in front. Any constant can come out in front like this, times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of my function. Oh, I already know what this is. So 4 square root of 3 over 3. All right. Stay tuned for a second because I'm about to show you the picture and it's cool. The pictures, the visuals here are the coolest part. By the way, if you want another formula, um, area of an equilateral triangle, if you just want to memorize the formula and don't want to do this every time, it's just up to you. It's whether you feel like memorizing another formula. Uh, 
The formula for an equilateral triangle turns out to be root 3 over 4 times s squared. So this root 3 over 4 comes from the fact that, well, we have a root 3 from the height. Hopefully you know that. The half, there's a half that comes from here. And there's a half because to get the height, we have to cut the side length in half over here before we get the height. Okay? So the base is the whole side. Then it gets cut in half and multiplied by square root of 3 to get the height. So 1 half base times height. So this is a formula. Some people prefer to just memorize this formula. Some people like drawing out the triangle. It's up to you. I promised a picture. Equilateral triangles, again, from negative 1 to 1. And you'll see that we have some other options for different bases that you can make this. Hopefully you can use the ideas that we know and what you know about area formulas to figure out what some of the rest of these are going to be. I'm available if you need help. Okay, here's your shape. All right, first coming down, here's the circle that I started with. And then if we look along this side, you can see the each of the equilateral triangle slices that are making up this shape. So this is the shape that we are finding the volume of. All right, later this week or early next week, I'm going to post some more notes and then I'll actually hold kind of a review recap session of everything where we just go over some questions together. In the meantime, if you have any questions for me, I'll open up a I'll, I'll probably open up a Canvas page here so that you can send in some questions. You can message me on Remind. Uh, you can send in uh, through Carrier Pigeon, whatever you want to do. But I will talk to you more soon. Take care.